Most people trying to break into the data field invest massive amounts of time learning and gaining the skills needed to get their target role. But what happens when people finally do get their target role? Well, after some celebrating, what usually happens is people begin to coast, they stop learning, and they miss out on future opportunities. Today, I'm going to be covering the topic of upskilling and providing a framework that you can use to continually improve your skills and advance in your career. So let's get started. So essentially, there's two different ways we can approach skill building. Okay, one is going wider and the other is going deeper. This is called T-shaped skills. T-shaped skills. And the way this works is that the T on top is going broader with your skills and the arrow going down is going deeper with those skills. So first let's cover the topic of going broader. Now some people may argue that you should only go broad and that you shouldn't worry about specializing, but we're gonna go over why going deeper is advantageous to you and your career in a little bit. But first let's talk about what the benefits are of going broader. So going broader is necessary in some regards because one, it's necessary to have a somewhat broad understanding. So this one seems obvious, but gives a broad understanding of your field. Okay, so say uh, your skill set is uh, Excel, SQL, Tableau, Power BI, Python, R, and, and, and you have a knowledge of all those things. That That's good in and of itself to have a base in each of these skills to prove that you know the full analyst toolkit, or at least to some extent, doesn't have to be all of those exact skills, but giving that broad understanding also exposes you to many areas. So exposes you to many areas. So part of this is we don't really know what we like until we've tried it. So for myself, I did spend time initially learning each of those skills I mentioned, and eventually I found that I really had a knack for Power BI. It was one of the primary skills in my company's tech stack, but it was also just a tool that I really enjoyed using. And so you might be able to guess that that's the one that I chose to go deeper in, but if I hadn't have gone broad first, I wouldn't have known to go deeper in that skill. So another benefit of going broad is it shows you that full toolkit, even if you're not a master in each skill. So full toolkit. Before we even talk about specializing, having a broad array of skills still allows you to do more. But this is where going deeper begins to become really helpful because if you never specialize in a specific skill, you're essentially going to become a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And I've spoken to many of my hiring manager friends who would agree, not that I'm a hiring manager, but I know many, and most of them agree that they'd rather have a specialist and someone who's good in one or two areas then kind of okay in a lot of areas. So when we're talking about going deeper, the first thing I wanna target here is that it makes you a more niche candidate. So as you begin to advance in your career, you'll notice that there's different types of data analyst roles. If we're using data analyst as an umbrella term, you could be a SQL administrator, a Power BI developer, a Tableau developer, or maybe the company that you're interviewing for primarily uses Excel and you can still make really good money with Excel as your primary tool. And the same is true for Python. I've had friends tell me that Python is the main skill that they use. And whether you're a data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, your toolkit is going to to, um, vary a little bit, but as you progress in your career, you'll begin to see the benefit of niching down in one or two areas. And that might be hard to see in the beginning because I'd agree that in the beginning, it's probably a good idea to just keep it broad. But once you've kind of gotten through the door, entry level or a junior role, whatever it may be, it's helpful to niche down in one or two areas. Become an expert in one or two areas. And this is what I chose to do in my path as an analyst once I got into the field. I mentioned earlier that Power BI really had a fancy for it and, and it kind of became my thing. And I chose intentionally at a certain point to niche down in that area because I wanted to be a Power BI developer. I wanted to be a Power BI whiz. So I went and I got the Microsoft PL300 uh, Power BI data analyst certification. I targeted Power BI developer roles and I was kind of all in 
in in that area and that did help me to progress because eventually I was able to get a more niche specific Power BI developer role, I was paid more money, yada, yada, yada. And so in my personal experience, niching down was very helpful. And you could do the same thing with any skill. So pick a skill that you really enjoy, that you're good at, that maybe you get a lot of exposure to at work and double down on that skill. And so the third thing I wanna mention with niching down in a single area is it gives you more focus. So it gives focus to your skills journey. So because I knew I wanted to be a Power BI guy, it gave me the focus to watch more YouTube videos on that area, complete more projects in that. I was able to prove my credentials more after a period of time because I was focused in one area. I was kind of all in right there. So the focus that going deeper provides is uh, it allows you to just become really good in one area. So the next thing I want to review is a method for how to improve in your skills. And this is something I recommend pretty much to anyone at every level. It could vary a little bit depending on if you're in the field or not in the field, but this method for improvement, so let's just say how to improve. And here's the method that I would suggest. So the first is take a course. That one seems like a no brainer. The second thing on the list here is a personal project or implementation. Kind of getting cut off there, but that says implementation. And so once you've taken the course, it's time to put those skills to the test so that you retain it and that you learn it. So if you don't have an opportunity to implement these skills at work, which is the most optimal way, but if you can't, then you want to complete a personal project. So say you're not yet in the role that uses these skills, you're not yet in the field, personal project is the way to cover that experience gap. So guided projects are helpful, but eventually you want to create a project that you've taken on from scratch. Watch a course on some sort of SQL aspect that you want to learn about and then go ahead and grab a data set, give yourself some objectives and create a project around it. So creating projects is how you're going to put those skills into action and it's going to help you retain that information better. And the third step, pretty simple, but number three is repeat. So you just repeat that process until you get to where you want to be with those skills. And you're probably never going to be a true master of any of these skills and that's fine. Very few people are, but if you set a bar for where you want to get to in your learning, and, and maybe that, that bar is, is just a position that you want. Say, for example, you want to become a Power BI developer, so you want to get better in XYZ areas, or you want to continue to improve until you get that job, and then you still don't want to coast, so you want to figure out what's next from there. But following this framework, taking a course, implementing or creating a project, and then just repeating that process until you are where you want to be. And so you can do this if you're going broader. So as as you're learning new skills, you can take on that process of taking a course, creating a project, and repeating that until you feel comfortable enough in that skill to move on to a new one. Uh, and once you're at the step of going deeper, that's when you can pick the target skill you want. I, I wouldn't really do two at a time, but picking the one or two skills you want to improve in, and then just continue to put in repetition of course material and projects. I think eventually you'll get to a point where you're creating more projects than you are watching videos, but there's so much material out there to digest that you could watch a video and do a project a day every day for like a year longer. But okay, so let's review this T-shaped approach one more time. So we have going broader, which gives you an understanding of your field, exposes you to many areas, gives you a strong toolkit, which you can use to approach your work, and then going deeper, which helps you to become a niche candidate, specialize in one or two skills, and gives you more focus for advancing in your career. Again, the T-shaped model is something that I've been utilizing since the beginning of my data career. And it's helped me to move along relatively quickly. So totally recommend it for anyone. It's a very focused approach to upskilling and getting better at your craft, getting better as an analyst and, and moving up to the positions you wanna to get to. Thanks again for watching. I hope that was helpful. If it was, feel free to like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And over here, I'll link a video talking about the skills that the top 1% of data analysts have. And it might surprise you to learn what they are. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.